Ladies and gentlemen, I, I can introduce this person as uh, Senator Tawana Nobles. I can introduce this person as um, the uh, the niece of Aunt Cecilia. Don't yeah, cry. I won't. <laughs> um, Mama Nobles and also former CEO of the Tacoma Urban League. But today she is here to talk about the Black Future Co-op Fund. Welcome, Chief Executive Officer. <laughs> there it is. To one of nobles. Welcome back. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> in all of your iterations, I was thinking about the first time I ever saw you when I think I was at a uh, educational fair and you were there with Ladies First. Yes. That's how far back. I mean, yes. and you you haven't aged a bit. <laughs> you look like Thank you too. could be. Um, you know, just hang out buddies with your kids because you mm. look that young. And I've never seen you in such beautiful street clothes. Thank you. You just do it all, don't you? I, they, I definitely was like, I want to dress casual. 60 days of session, I'm like, I, I don't want to wear a suit today. I'm not, I'm not putting anything tied on around no. my waist. I'm done. <laughs> we got a lot to get through. So let's talk about this fund, Black Future Co-op Fund, mm -hmm. um, actively promotes equity and inclusion within a diverse spectrum of the black community it serves. Yeah. How is that fun started? Let us look behind the scenes mm -hmm. and see how this works. Yeah, I really love my new role as the CEO of Black Future Co-op Fund. There are four of us architects or co-founders. So myself, Michelle Merriweather, um, Andrea Capayne Sanderson, and Angela Jones. And almost four years ago, we decided that we wanted to launch a foundation that could support the very diverse black community across Washington State. You mentioned Ladies First. That was the first business that I started. I know! And so this is my newest venture, and it's so fulfilling because it's full-time philanthropy. And so we really try to be in community, in the black community across the state. I'll talk about my listening tour uh, later. Yes. But we're learning what the needs are from Jefferson County to um, Pierce County and King County. I was just in Yakima last Friday, the day after session. My to old to the community. Ground. So we're trying to make sure that we understand the diverse needs by being in community, hearing directly from community all across the state. And those diverse needs, it feels like to me, um, with my white immunity, that every single day it, it steps up. There's more mm. and more momentum. There's more and more chances to stand in the solution. Reflecting on the nearly four years of operation, what yeah. significant achievements or milestones that have, have you celebrated and how have they impacted those communities because they reflect the community? Mm -hmm. So many milestones. One, again, we launched nearly four years ago. We've raised over $35 million. We've invested over $8 million back into the community in the form of grants and sponsorships. We have an amazing staff. There are four of us. Um, so to launch something and to have a staff that gets to work with you, we have our grantees or our partners. We offer our We See You grants to our grantees. Um, because we a great graphic. <laughs> because we, we see the work. We yeah. see the tremendous investment that the black community continues to make in solutions that really help to move Washington State forward. Um, but all of all of those things and all of our partnerships, I mean, for the fourth season this year, we will be front and center on the jerseys of Seattle Rain before it was <gasps> OL Rain. But for the fourth season, at no cost to us, they, they simply are saying, we believe in racial justice. We believe in a black community. We want you front and centered. What a so gift. Everyone can see Look you at all. This. Yeah. So lots to reflect on and be excited about. So, so you, I, I, I have been such a fan of yours way, way back when, talking Thank about Ladies you. First. And even then, I was um, so taken by your ability to listen. Mm -hmm. You listen with your whole body, Tawana, when you listen. And so it doesn't surprise me that you've tapped into one of your natural gifts that was given to you and you're doing a statewide listening tour. Um, what emerged? What emerges in terms of themes or voices that are mm -hmm. are noteworthy in your head, and how do they inform your organization's future strategies? Yeah, well, definitely. I mean, we developed um, a three-year strategic plan to really inform our work, and a lot of what we place in that strategic plan is what we've heard as the needs 
of community. So the statewide listening tour allows us to continue to listen to community. I mentioned we were just in Yakima on Friday. Yeah. On April 12th, we have our Puget Sound listening tour. Um, we traveled out to Kitsap County for a region, and all the listening tours are regional, not just that county. But we are learning from community that education, public safety, yes. healthcare, these continue to be needs, mm -hmm. uh, or these continue to be important issues, but we are also listening for community-based solutions. So we produced a Black Wellbeing Report at the end of 2022, and it's available. I hope folks check it out on our website, but it really is an analysis of, you know, a, a thousand Black voices and what they see as challenges and also solutions, and also lifting up the incredible work of the Black community yes. in our state. But the listening tour is a continued expansion, because you can't just go listen to community and do some work the needs are ever changing, the successes yeah. are ever changing, and we wanna to continue to promote truthful black narratives across our state. And so the listening tour is really allowing us to amplify the voices, the work, and the needs, not so that we can fund, just not so only we can fund organizations, but we can share with our funding partners who Absolutely. may be interested. And so much of that listening, when, when you hear about um, some of the barriers, yeah. then that's where, <clears throat> excuse me, you step in, remove those barriers. Mm -hmm. Um, and as you're hearing about barriers, you also get to hear about dreams in the sense of a philanthropic approach to better meet yeah. the needs and aspirations because aspirations and goals, I mean, the art of success is failing mm. over and over and mm. over again and, and reanalyzing. So what is it that you have learned um, that, that the black community needs to be more philanthropic to achieve their dreams? Well, the beautiful thing is we talk about how the black community has always been philanthropic. Always. I mean, we celebrate Black Philanthropy Month, but also that black philanthropy is 365. I mean, our black churches, sororities, yes. fraternities, mutual aid, our community has always been philanthropic. We've always had to um, rely on each other because we haven't been able to rely on institutions, on government. Um, these systems have you know, failed us and continue to fail us, and so yeah. relying on our own um, community is what we are accustomed to. Mm -hmm. But we have these strategies in our strategic plan, so connecting black communities for uh, collective power. We are just more powerful together. Um, investing in black generational prosperity, that really is our, our grant making process. Promoting truthful black narratives in a way that we lift up the stories, stories, because we don't leave with a deficit model of, well, we have money because there is there is a gap. It's, it's also, Black folks are doing incredible things that we yes. want to see them continue to do and resources, capital could help them to do so. And so we're trying to shift the philanthropic paradigm by saying, you know, the applications, the reports, these things are challenges. To receive our funds, there is no application. There is no grant report. Wow. There are no barriers. We travel the state to find organizations to fund their work to sponsor their work, to amplify their work on our social media. So we're trying to be a different type of philanthropic organization. That, that is just incredible. So when you look at, I mean, because obviously the, oh, what a great, great picture. Um, the Black Future Co-op Fund, um, it is crucial in addressing the unique challenges and opportunities led by Black-led organizations and communities. Do you, how do you zero in on mm -hmm. just, as you travel, just things that are homegrown that you can offer a solution to? How mm -hmm. do you not feel overwhelmed? The reality is I do feel overwhelmed. Yeah. I mean, I feel overwhelmed by the beauty in our community. I feel overwhelmed by the stories that I'm told, by the people that I get to meet. I just meet, met an 80-year-old um, um, leader in Yakima, Miss Esther, who has done tremendous work for that community and is just shy of a million dollars towards building a new community pool. Um, and they've worked with their state senators and our fund is gonna support them as well. But it is overwhelming to witness the beauty and the joy and the creativity and also to recognize that this country continues to play in our face and we have to create organizations like this to help us to move forward. But the work is being done, the maternal health work is being done, yes. arts, education, like the work is being done by incredible black folks. And so um, the overwhelm is just real because it's, it's um, a great, beautiful diversity of gifts all across the state. And so I feel very fortunate to be in this role. 
As, as the four of you travel around the state and, and, and listen and take notes, during that four years, have there been moments, Tawana, when you have come back and changed a strategic plan mm. because you've seen a common denominator you didn't expect in certain communities? Tell mm -hmm. us about that. Absolutely. One thing we committed to ourselves was that our strategic framework, our strategic plan would need to be flexible for that exact reason. Absolutely. When we engage with community, there is the theoretical, yeah. the hypothetical, but then there is the reality when we're in community and we realize that maybe in the way that we communicate, maybe in a way that we're asking to receive feedback and the way that we structure our agendas or meetings um, or enter into communities need to change so that we are being respectful and honoring mm -hmm. communities. Because we, we're a team of black folks, but we're not gonna represent everyone. I don't live in a no. rural area, so there's a lot that I have to learn and respect Absolutely. about those communities too. Yeah, racism and barriers in Yakima look very different <clears throat> than how they look in um, uh, Union, Washington, mm -hmm. or um, Chehalis, mm -hmm. or something like that. I mean, so there is probably a constant evolution. Yeah. Um, and yeah. also, when you walk into a community, based upon how quickly things can change, good and not so good, that's going to change the feedback that you get. So with true. with that co-op in the fund's name, um, how does it embody the principles and collaborations in terms of community initiatives? Mm -hmm. Because, I, I mean, you just talked about this woman in the pool in, in Yakima. I'm thinking, man, pool is life in Yakima. That water, that, I mean, the, we got to have pools for kids. It's exercise. Yes. Swimming is a life skill. So I can imagine that there are lists of things that people want you to promote based mm. upon the power of the co-op. Mm -hmm. And this last minute who do we need to thank because you, yeah. you in four yeah. years my god 35 or 38 over 35 35 mm -hmm. million with an m mm -hmm. okay mama who do we yeah. need to thank i want to first thank black washingtonians yes. for being yes. um, joyful and resilient i want to thank my amazing team so we have a staff of four and i also want to thank my fellow co-founders and architects and our consultants but so many of our partners, our donors, like folks who fund our work so we can quickly get that money back into the community. Um, and just everyone for believing in, in yes. us. I mean, it's not easy to start up something to be a founder, but so many folks have made it possible. So thanks to all of our teams, all of our donors, um, but to community for, a lot, for trusting us to do this work and for building relationship yes. with us cooperatively. I can't wait to have you back on the couch, Thank and I you. want you to bring I want you to bring some business people with you next time. Okay? Yes. Just kind of see if we can work on that. It's so good to see you. Thank you for you being too. here. Thank you. It looks like we've got uh, Stuart over there in the City Line Comfort Cafe, and oh my gosh, is he talking about trees again? We're going to do a little musical chairs, and we'll be right back after this quick break.